Game 7 of the World Chess Championship just finished up after yesterday's, well, bled into today, but mostly yesterday's epic brawl. I don't think many of us were expecting too hard of a fight with Nepomniachtchi having the white pieces. Um, how did it end up? Like I said, Nepomniachtchi had white. E4. Um, I think we need to make an exception for this game because he took such a hard punch to the gut yesterday. So I don't think anyone should blame him for wanting to psychologically and physically recover from yesterday's marathon. I do think Nepomniachtchi seriously needs to consider switching away from E4. He is getting really nothing with the white pieces. Carlson has shown some superb preparation with the black pieces. Um, and Carlson hasn't even had to resort to a weapon like the Berlin draw. Um, I think Napomni actually really, hopefully has a backup weapon of like D4, maybe some sort of aggressive English opening, something to get chances. Because so far in this match, he's really achieved nothing with the white pieces at all. Um, ironically, his greatest winning chance to come when Carlson's had White push for a win, and Napomniachtchi's been able to get that sort of aggressive position in which he typically excels. Um, Carlson played e5. I mean, Carlson's had superb positions with Black so far against e4. So there's no reason to switch away from his preparation. And we continue into a Spanish. If if Napomniachtchi wants to continue with uh, e4, it's I, if I were him, I would seriously consider maybe the Italian, or maybe even the Scotch, if he wants to be a little bit more surprising and slightly more aggressive. Um, but we continue with the Spanish, A6, no reason for Carlson to switch away, and we reach a position that's been reached, this will be the fourth time so far. Um, it's clear that Napomniachtchi has no interest in dueling in the Marshal proper. This is a Opening that's notorious for having a huge theoretical footprint and being very difficult for white to deal with. I think this is far easier for black to play. In fact, when you look at the database, the main move d4, white actually has a negative score now, which I think is fairly indicative of the difficulty level of the position. Oh. Napoleon actually played a4. Um, game one went h3. Just a reminder, this was the course of game one. Um, Nut a5 is a fairly offbeat move, but we reached this position where black has excellent compensation for the pawn. Um, and Carlson went on to fairly comfortably draw after some complications. And Napoleon actually has switched to a4 since game one. It's clear that he's not interested in discussing that h3 line anymore. Um, but at least the course of game one, there were some complications. I think so far, with white, a4 hasn't achieved too much either. Rook b8, this is, an, this is a repeat of game 5. Again, everything's working for Carlson, so there's no reason to switch. Uh, the, this is was a slightly offbeat move. I would assume this will take a huge bump in popularity uh, after this match is concluded. Uh, the two main moves in the position are bishop b7, this is the most popular move, or b4. I would say this is more positionally risky because it sort of puts the B-pawn out of an island. Uh, but Rook B8 is very logical. There's no reason to criticize this move. AB still following game 5. Gains the A-file for white. This is a little bit of something. H3. Um, maybe this is a point where white looks for something a little bit more ambitious. I would say maybe C3 should be considered. Um, the marshal really isn't appropriate here. I mean, I think this inclusion of all these queenside moves heavily favors white. This feels like it's not nearly enough compensation for black anymore. So d6 looks normal. And, I mean, white could, pl white could play h3 here, but d4 immediately is a little bit interesting. And at least this somewhat imbalanced position where white has a, a kingside majority, he's got this pawn wedge in e5. Black has some queenside play. He can play it well time before. But the key word is imbalance. At least this is an imbalanced position where Nepomniachtchi could play for a win. And there's two dueling sides of the board at which Nepomniachtchi could maybe cause Carlson to go wrong. Um, maybe somewhere for uh, Nepomniachtchi to look. Uh, H3, very very quiet. It's very appropriate. But, um, 
D3, this, this deviates from game 5. C3 was played in game 5. And Napomni actually didn't get too much from that game. So D3 is the first real deviation. And Knight C3, this is different from the usual Spanish concept of playing C3 with the idea of preparing later D4. Usually this knight takes the track of knight D2, knight F1, and then to either G3 or E3, depending on circumstances. Here, white is playing knight C3 immediately, and the idea seems to be hopping into D5 to trade off this knight on F6, and then playing C3 and D4. Um, the downside for white is this process of spending time and playing knight c3, knight d5, and then trade on f6, that's a real investment of time. And when you couple that with playing c3 and then playing d4 after you've already played d3, that's a big loss of time for white. Um, I don't think this is going to catch on theoretically. Uh, rookie 8, knight b4 is interesting. I would say Carlson would play this if he needed to win. This keeps up some more complications in the position. One way this could go, two, and then c3, and this still looks balanced, but this is a very strategically imbalanced position. This is more like a, a mainline Chigorin. Uh, white still has d4 in the can, but he can also just try maneuvering his pieces on the king side. Um, very interesting position. But rookie eight, very solid. This is the usual Spanish-style reorganization. So knight d5, this is Nepomniachtchi's idea with playing knight c3, just hopping into d5 to trade this knight off. Knight e2 would try to keep more tension in the position. But that said, this looks incredibly comfortable for for black. I don't think black has any problems here at all. D, uh, b4 will achieve good play. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think uh, black has any problems here at all. So knight d5, if you're playing knight c3, knight d5 seems like the idea. And takes on f6, but again, this is fairly inefficient for white, because black played knight f6, just one move, and white played knight c3, knight d5, and knight takes f6. So, more or less two wasted tempi to trade off pieces. Uh, in addition, white's going to lose a move once he plays d4 after having played d3. So, this is a fairly long-winded plan for white, and it's not clear it's making up for the time investment. C3, 97, this is, uh, again, this is the standard Spanish reorganization. In these Spanish-style positions, both sides are going to typically reorganize their knights towards the king side. So, white will often play knight B, again, knight D2, knight F1, knight G3. Black will often play knight C6, knight E7, knight E6. So, normal and good technique from Carlson. Bishop E3, mobilization. Bishop E6, so this is... I would say Carlson could think about playing differently if he needed a win or if he wanted complications. C5, I think, would keep some more energy in the position. One way this could go, rook a7. Note that d4 is a bad move here. And that's one point behind c5, is it, it sort of discourages the d4 break. c4, and then d5. And black is doing extraordinarily well here. Black has this mobile queenside majority. He's going to neutralize that light square bishop at bishop f5. Um, this is a very nice position. So d4 is not viable just yet, so rook a7. And this is a tense struggle, um, but I think black has good chances here. Uh, black has two pawn breaks to choose from. Uh, that is the one thing I, if you watch any of my other videos, Pawn breaks are the one, th one thing I always talk about, because they're sort of the engine of your play. Here, black has two pawn breaks to choose from, either f5 or d5, depending on circumstances. And black can prepare, choose between those, depending on what white does. Uh, but the, the fact that black has two viable pawn breaks to choose from, plus an entirely solid presence in the center, um, I would say this position is equal, but as, I would say practically. Black is fairly comfortable here. White does have position of the A-file, but it's not clear what that's achieving. Uh, but bishop e6 is a solid move. It's just neutralizing the Spanish bishop, trading down pieces. Uh, this is the move you play when you just finish an eight-hour long marathon and you're up a point in a world championship match, so we can't fault Carlson. D4, we finally get this move in. 
He gets d4. Knight g6 would be misguided. Here white can take. And then d5. Often in the Spanish, the timing of this d5 move matters quite a bit. Here, it's favorable after we trade off our light square bishops, because black has this dark square bishop left, which is quite terrible. And with white having all the central pawns on light squares, black's pawns are all on dark squares, this is very favorable for white. This is a, a very solid advantage. But black just continues to neutralize the position, takes on d4, takes on b3. Knight g6, notice that d5 would be a terrible positional choice. Black would have this crippled queenside majority, this huge hole on c5. Black can never play c5 effectively. White has this mobile majority in the king's side and center. Um, knight g6 is the way to go, just continuing the reorganization. And it opens up and uh, supports the c5 push. Uh, whenever you're looking at a plan in a position, you want to look at your pawn majorities. Here, black has a 2 to 1 majority of pawns on the queen side. So strategically, he wants to think about getting those pawns in action and pushing them down the board. Plus, here, the c5 push challenges white's center, which is exactly what you want to do. Rookie c1, if white defends the pawn, c5 is very strong. It gets that mobile queenside majority into action. Plus, knight d2 is very passive. This, this is suddenly a very strong position for black, so white needs to continue playing aggressively. C5, notice that rook xc4. This achieves less than nothing for black. In fact, I would favor white a little bit here, just because suddenly rook a7 is coming. Uh, those, that pair of rooks is quite strong. So c5, absolutely correct. Challenge the center, shut down that c-file for white. e5, white's more or less just forced to liquidate everything down. The e-pawn's under attack, so this is sort of tactically forced. Uh, taking on c5 is another way to liquidate now. E5 is the direct way. Queen F5. This, this is the only move, but it's, it's certainly more than enough. Notice if black takes. Uh, this, this is suddenly quite bad for black, because this, this is a very strong pass C pawn. Uh, and black doesn't have any sort of activity to compensate for that strong C pawn. So Queen F5 just leaves everything in place and prepares to continue liquidating. Uh, plus, black is also here threatening c4 suddenly, continuing to get his queenside majority of action. So white's hand, white's hand is completely forced here. So dxc5, and queen d5 looks tricky, but black can just play c4. And suddenly these pawns are extremely strong, and white still has a lot of problems with his e pawn here. So dxc5 is forced. And we... Continue the siphoning process. I'll show the rest of the moves, but these moves were all played at breakneck speed over the board. And the players finally shook hands here. Um, in the, the match, the rules dictate that you're not allowed to offer draws until move 40. So basically they immediately cross the Rubicon of the time control of move 40, and then just agree to a draw. Um... Certainly not an aggressive game. Pretty much this entire game was headed towards a draw from the opening. I would say knight c3, no. the choice of the opening almost dictated it. Um, I don't think we're going to see knight c3 again. This definitely seems like a concept designed to siphon some pieces off the board. Um, but the, the, the entire course of the game was designed to head towards a draw, it seemed like. Uh, you can't blame either of the players. For Nopomniachi playing eight hours and playing past midnight and losing in such a fashion, taking a quick time out to get your psychological stability back. I cannot blame the Paul Nash at all. For Carlson, having the black pieces, a point up in a world championship match to retain your title. I mean, you, you'd be silly to try to force complications into this sort of game. So the decision makes sense for both players, even if it doesn't please spectators. Um, but... The fascination from yesterday makes up for a game like today. So, um, next game, Carlson would have the white pieces, so we see that.